So the skinny on bone density. I'm here to help you realize the importance of bone density to your quality of life. Bone breakage and bone fractures are definitely devastating and they're more common than they need to be. So the good news is you can help mitigate the results of these injuries and this can be done by any gender, any age. A healthy amount of bone density can help prevent breakage and fractures from any kind of activity, anything from riding a bike and then falling and crashing to walking and slipping and falling. At the end of the video, you'll have a prime example of how a healthy amount of bone density helped prevent a serious injury from happening. You'll want to hear about this, so stay tuned. Bone mass or bone density is the amount of mineral in the bone tissue itself. Bone is made up mostly of a framework of collagen and calcium add in, adds strength and hardens that framework. Just like anything else in our body, bone is made up of living tissue that adapts and reacts to our environment. I mentioned in an earlier video how calcium, the mineral, is important for muscle contraction. Calcium is also important for the repair rebuilding and the remodeling of bone. If you don't have enough calcium in your bloodstream, your body will, will remove the calcium from your bone and even your stomach lining to add it back into your bloodstream. Your body's always trying to find an equilibrium. I always recommend getting your nutrients from whole foods, but if you need to supplement, 1000 milligrams is the recommended daily dosage. We need to think about vitamin D when we think about calcium because vitamin D, the hormone, helps the, with the absorption, absorption of calcium into your bloodstream. The daily recommended dose of supplementation would be about 600 IUs at a minimum. But now let's get into how bone regenerates. There are two main parts of what a bone is. It's made up of a compact outer core and also a spongy inner core. Your body replaces a spongy part just about every three to four years. And the compact part is also replaced but every 10 years or so. And this is called bone remodeling. The two most common names given to an unhealthy amount of bone mass or density would be osteoporosis and osteopenia. So who and how does one get diagnosed as having osteoporosis and osteopenia? Let's find out. So men and women 65 or older, also anyone with risk factors such as drug and medication abuse, smokers, also, anyone with rheumatoid arthritis. Some other factors that can increase bone loss would be low estrogen, low estrogen levels, especially after menopause, physical inactivity, abuse of alcohol, and other certain diseases. Unfortunately, symptoms only occur when you have a breakage or a fracture. A diagnosis is conducted by a bone density test. It's about 10 to 15 minutes long and it can be ordered by your primary care physician. It's done by a DEXA scan machine. Uh, it's very minimal in radiation. So the picture x-rays give clear indicators and data, enough data to form a diagnosis, along with or in conjunction with something called a T-measurement or T-score. The T-score is a measurement of your approximate bone density. If you have a T-score of less than 2.5, then that's a clear indicator of osteoporosis or osteopenia. On a side note, peak bone mass is determined by gender, age, physical activity, hormones, and genetics. Women tend to peak at an earlier age, so it's important to keep an eye on bone density. The most common types of osteoporosis are postmenopausal and senile or age-related. So we're getting real close to the end now. And we should talk about some remedies and treatments. And this is the part that gets real fascinating for me. For extensive detail on this section right here, why don't you go ahead and check out Wolf's Law. It has to do with the mechanics of bone remodeling. But for now, let's go ahead and stick to the basics. Because of gravity, you naturally have a resistance or a load on your bones or body. So this load in conjunction with the minerals in your body, especially calcium, causes a sort of electric charge called a piezoelectric charge. This electric charge, along with the bone building cells in your body, 
causes a rewelding effect on your bones. This rewelding or remodeling effect is called osteoblast. So if stronger bones is what is needed, you want to induce osteoblast. That's the reason why I always recommend resistance training or weight training and using your own body weight will suffice. Osteoporosis can be difficult to reverse, so prevention is our main focus here. Only 15% of patients can walk into a room unassisted after only one year of breaking a hip. Just make sure you're doing some kind of activity of your choosing, one that you can do consistently with progression and compliance. And you also want to take in enough calcium and vitamin D. Less smoking and drinking, more fun in the sun, and if diagnosed, make sure you're following your, prescri your prescribed treatments and medications as directed. So now that you made it this far, let me go ahead and tell you about my friend Marco, as promised. My friend Marco, at the time of this occurrence, was lifting heavy weights, also doing peripheral work for his arms and legs. You can see a clear uh, advancement in the size of his forearms. He told me about the time he was walking through an apartment complex after visiting a friend. He noticed a cracked door while, while walking past an apartment. He told me that he remembered that it was very silent and there was no noise coming from the apartment at all. Soon after he passed the door, he felt a sharp pain and a tugging on his right forearm. Immediately he felt a second tug. When he looked down, he realized there was a fully grown young Rottweiler clamped down on his arm, attached. He told me that the dog was not trying to tear the arm off, you know, shaking back and forth with aggression. Instead, he felt the dog trying to clamp down tighter and tighter onto the arm, into the bone, as if he was trying to just break and crack it. So this heavy Rottweiler was hanging in the middle of the air, locked down into my friend's forearm. Extensive bleeding, of course, was coming out. But right at that moment, luckily enough, the owner came out, definitely an ambulance was called. It was a terrible experience for my friend, he's still recovering till this day. In the end, the dog had to be put to sleep. After my friend came to me with this story, we both realized that if it wasn't for his massive forearms from years of heavy training under load, that that dog would have definitely broke through and maybe fractured the bone into small pieces. Who knows what would have, what would have happened at that point. It definitely was a crazy experience, but we were thankful that nothing more came out of it. Well guys, we've reached the end of this video. I do want to thank you for tuning in. And if you want to see more of these videos, please think about subscribing, share the video. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.